very latest on this story now. Let's bring in our regional correspondent, Gulliver Craig. Gulliver, this, of course, happening against the background of Lukashenko cracking down even harder on the opposition. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, human rights groups say that 35,000 people have been arrested since the start of the protests. That's, of course, people who've been arrested, detained for 5, 10, 15, 20 days, some for longer, then released. But currently, human rights groups say that there are more than 300 political prisoners in Belarus, some of them serving long sentences. Roman Protasevich uh, is now among them and may be about to be sentenced uh, as well. The crimes that he's currently charged with carry potential jail sentences sentences of up to 15 years in prison. They're all linked to his activity as one of the founders of the Nectar blog and media. In fact, he wasn't in Belarus. He already had left Belarus in 2019, citing pressure on him due to his political activities. From there, he was one of these uh, bloggers from working from Poland and from Lithuania, who not only played an absolutely crucial role in providing information about what was going on as those protests exploded against Alexander Lukashenko's regime, after his fraudulent re-election in August 2020, throughout August, September and into October, um, but also in some cases giving instructions and information about where protesters should gather. So clearly he was someone that uh, the Belarusian authorities wanted very, very badly to see behind bars. And this happens, of course, in the context of an ever tighter crackdown on the Belarusian opposition. Large-scale protests pretty much died out in the winter because it's so difficult to protest without being arrested at all. But Perhaps you've seen there are very, very small gatherings in protest against Alexander Lukashenko that have happened after this incident with the plane. But it's always groups of like five to ten people and they don't stay out for very long because you basically just get arrested if you do. When I was in Belarus in April, I even saw somebody being arrested apparently simply for wearing red and white, which are the traditional colours now of the opposition. Gulliver, what about this operation itself? I mean, this is really incredible, this false bomb alert, if that's what it turns out to be. What more do we know about how exactly this was carried out? Well, I think we don't know exactly uh, how it uh, happened, but Michael O'Leary, the uh, boss of Ryanair, clearly doesn't believe the story that there may have been a bomb on side, uh, inside the plane for a second. Ryanair has now called it an act of, uh, of, of, of aviation piracy and condemned it as a crime. We know that the plane was getting very close to Vilnius in Lithuania, but when it turned back, Vilnius is located quite close to the Belarusian border, but it was clearly closer um, to Vilnius than it was to Minsk, even though it was still in Belarusian airspace. Strangely, it appears not to have descended as much as um, a plane would normally be expected to do before landing in Vilnius when it got to the point where it was at, which makes one perhaps uh, think that the pilots knew earlier on or that there was already something going on on board the plane, um, that they knew they were going to have to turn back or perhaps that they were trying to speed into Lithuanian airspace in order to not have to try to turn back. But they were still in Belarusian airspace and Belarus scrambled a fighter jet to accompany the plane back down to Minsk airport. So I don't think uh, that the Ryanair pilots thought that they could have taken the risk to their passengers' security of not complying with what appears to have been, and according to Ryanair, were um, instructions coming from Belarusian air traffic control. Mm. Gulliver, thank you for that. That's the France 24's regional correspondent, Gulliver Craig, in Kiev.